Okay, so uh, this is the bird and the parts of the bird so far are linked together. The linking happens like this. The lower wing is linked to the upper wing and the upper wing is linked to the body of the bird and the same goes for the other side. So the beak parts are linked to the head. The eyes are also linked to the head. So everything is linked logically. You don't have to really guess what is linked to what. Just use your head a little bit. All right, and it would work. So the head is linked to the neck, neck is linked to the body, and the tail is linked to the body. The paws are linked to the lower leg, lower leg to upper leg, upper leg to body. So it's logical the way things are linked. So once we do have this, we need to start to work on the animation. Now, the first thing I need to do before I start to work on the animation is um, make sure that The position is position XYZ and rotation is rotation XYZ, Euler XYZ. Now, you don't really have to check for this every time you're doing animation. The reason I'm checking for this now is because I exported the bird as 3DS because I worked on it on an earlier on Mac 2008 and I gave it to students with Max 9, so I couldn't save as Max 5, so I had to export in a different format. When I did export in a different format, the position and rotation controllers got messed up. So I regained now the originals. In case when you create your own bird, you don't have to go through the step, just animate normally. So you would uh, link things together like I did. And after that, we need to determine the time of the cycle of the bird. So one flight cycle, um, it's not 40. I set it to 40 here, but after I animated the bird flying forward, I found out that 40 was too slow. So 30 is probably a better choice. So I'm going to go to time configuration and set the end time to 30. The way we work in animation, whenever we have something repetitive like a walk or a run or a flight or whatever, or something that repeats, we do it in one cycle and then we duplicate that cycle. So that's the logic that we have to follow. We don't repeat the cycle manually over and over. We do one cycle and then we duplicate the keyframes to duplicate the cycle. All right, so um, I'll press Auto key. Before I animate again, I need to make sure that my interpolation for the keyframes is set to Auto, which would create smooth interpolation between keyframes, which means that if the bird has its wings up and then it lowers them down and then up again, it's not going to go in a robotic manner. It will go in a floating, slow manner, right? So it wouldn't be robotic without any life in it. No, it will have weight and rhythm. OK, so um, the first thing I will animate is the up and down motion of the body. So with auto key on, remember this is 30 frames for the cycle, actually it's 31 because we're counting zero but we don't really worry about it. Um, I'm going to set a keyframe at zero and set a keyframe at 30. So I know that at zero and 30 the bird is in this position. So if I go halfway which is frame 15 and raise the bird up, it's going to start low and then go up and again low again and when it loops it will repeat the same motion. So if I press play, that's the up and down motion for the bird. All right, which is nice. So let's um, actually lower it down a bit because it's probably too high. All right, and see how it goes like this. All right, so this is... Actually, it doesn't go all that high. But because it's a cartoonish bird, cartoonish type of animation, remember, animation is an exaggeration of life. You see, you don't do it exactly like it happens in life. You exaggerate it to give it the impression of being alive. Um, so that's it for the uh, up and down motion for the body. Now we're going to work on the wings. So we take the left wing or the right wing, depending on whichever direction you're looking at it. And 
you rotate it up. Now remember that you need to be in gimbal mode when you animate rotation, right? So before you animate rotation, you go to gimbal and you rotate up. You look down here to see how much you're rotating up. Let's say minus 45 degrees. All right, so that's uh, that should be at the beginning and at the end. Before we do that, when the uh, bird is going up, forget about what I did. Let's remove this animation for the wings. Delete. When the bird is going up, the wings should go down or should go up with the bird. When the bird is going up, the wings should go down so that the body gets lifted up. Which means that at the beginning, the wings should be up because they're going down. So at the beginning, I rotate them up again, say 45 degrees. And the same goes for this wing here. Negative 45, which is uh, negative 135 because 90 is the offset between the two. So if you add 45 to 90, you get 135. Let's choose angle snap to make the work easier. So um, here, I'm gonna set keyframes for both these and I'll press shift and copy the keyframes to the end so that at both ends, we have the wings up. But halfway through, we're gonna rotate it down, say to 90 degrees from the side and 90 degrees from that side so if you press play we start to get something and um, if you look at the curve of this we see that it's nice and smooth because of the interpolation that we set to auto at the beginning if we set it to linear like this look at this wing here compared to that one okay this one is automatic it's um, it's mechanical it's not really natural so um, we go back and interpolation auto anyway now that we have done this we need to work on the other wing which is this one at the beginning, I'm going to rotate this up to make it look a bit straightish. So 45 degrees. And the same goes for that one. Alright. I will set keyframes for both to create keyframes. And I'll copy till frame 30. And at 15, which is halfway through, I'll rotate this downwards like this. Alright. So just following the same logic. So if I look at it from here now, the bird is starting to fly. Now we need to work on the neck. All right, so um, the neck, when the bird goes up, the neck actually is a bit down. It stays down for a while and then it goes up and then goes down for a while all right but the beginning and the end are not exactly the same so if i look you see beginning and end are not exactly the same so i can just copy the keyframe from the beginning till the end all right it's nice but i need to make sure that the curves are smooth so if i go to my curve editor you see that it's not very smooth that's why you have this jerky motion so i'll select this and i'll just fix the tangents until i have this nice curve animation is all about nice curves all right i can play with this a bit more if i like if I can go down here and just go like this and from here go like that just to make sure that the curves are continuous alright and uh, you 
You see here, it looks like the bird is actually pushing itself so that it can fly forward even more. It's all about the curve. All right, so that's good for the uh, neck. Now the head. Um, head should be in opposite direction as the neck. So whenever the neck tries to fall down, the head would fall, would go upwards. And let's copy the keyframe over here and see what happens. All right, so you see now that it's really trying to push itself forward. And um, let's look at the curve to see if it's nice and smooth. Yeah, it is nice and smooth. Um, maybe just reduce the strength of that motion a bit by decreasing the curve. All right, so let's look at it from here. All right, the last thing I want to do with this Let's save the file at this stage, of course, fearing a disaster. And uh, let's animate the upper fin. You see, it's. Um, let's go to frame 15. And here, I don't really have an axis for gimbal. I'm not going to go into the details of why I don't have an axis for gimbal. Before I actually animate it, the pivot point is wrong, so I'm going to go to Hark Effect Pivot Only and place it here. Alright, so I don't have an axis to rotate in here in gimbal mode, so just for now I will um, rotate in the Z axis a bit backwards. Alright, and copy the keyframe over there. And you see now that this actually has weight and whenever the bird is trying to pull forward, this is going backwards because of the momentum. You understand what I'm doing? So here, momentum is the uh, mass multiplied by the velocity, <laughs> which means that um, if you drag something forward, let's say that you have Let's say that you have a rock and a piece of cloth tied to the rock and you throw the rock down from the roof. The rock will fall down but the piece of cloth will actually go higher until it reaches the ground. So you have negative directions. So whenever the head of the bird is pushing forward, the fin is pushing backwards. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. Just look at it and see that it looks nice like this so you keep it. So, uh, yeah, because animation has a lot to do with physics, physics and math. A lot, but not in this course. Um, so there you go. I can do the same thing for the legs, but that's basically how you would animate the bird. So this is animating the bird cycle. Uh, next, we're going to see how to animate the bird flying wherever we like it to fly.